Sorry. Oh, it's, it's, it, uh, isn't the interest rate 10? It's 10 divided by 10. 10 divided by 2. Do you have binoculars, Andrew? <laughs> what am I doing, Andrew? Uh, I don't know. No. <laughs> I think it's the interest rate above my figure. <laughs> <laughs> It's semi-annual, isn't it? Yeah, what, I mean, sometimes it's crazy. Because what is it? The cash flows were calculated with 8%. So that can be 4. It doesn't matter. I'm using the present value at 10%. Right. So I should be discounted. Let's 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 do let's. This is very sensitive. Let's, it wasn't quarterly. No, it's it's not quarterly. It's semi-annual. No. Oh, it is quarterly. That's the problem. <laughs> Thank you, Juanita. There we go. Okay. Thank you, Juanita. It's quarterly, not semi-annual. That's why it's two dollars. It's ten percent. Would be ten dollars a year. Quarterly, it's four times. So. We can Wait, but two dollars doesn't go into ten four times. No, that's where I messed up too. The coupon is eight percent. Oh, okay. No, I didn't hear that. I heard ten percent. But guys, listen to that because that was an error with a lot of people made. The market interest rate is not the coupon. The mortgage doesn't fluctuate with the market. Well, but it's not an arm. Okay. Two arms. And then, and then. <laughs> the amortization, I mean, most of you got it, you know, most of you got it, okay, so, most of you got it, so there's no, there's no magic to that one, okay, so, I just went ahead and, and proved it with, you know, cumulative principal pay, and we're going to, that's what we're going to work on today, okay, so, um, I, I, I'm going to show you something, and I want to ask you to open up your computers, okay, so this is the model that I showed in, in, in the video, okay? I basically took the same information that we've done. I mm -hmm. manipulated, but what I did is I went ahead and I broke assumptions out into two different things. Revenue operating and capital expenditures. And I used different assumptions, okay? Different years, okay? I blew them out a little bit more, okay? And then I had CapEx, I blew out into two different things as well, two different concepts. One off, I'm buying a building, I need to make some improvements, I need to spend some money to get it up to par. And then the rest is I'm going to spend a certain amount of money every year in, as we said, painting, doing roofs, redoing, you know, elevators, doing kitchens, whatever it is that I need to do. Okay? So that's one set of assumptions. The next set of assumptions, and just look at the left side of the screen right now, okay? Don't look at the right side. I forget this for a second, okay? Just focus on this. Purchase assumptions. So basically, um, the purchase price, we're going to continue to use, um, we're going to calculate the cap rate. I can give it to you, but we can calculate it, and we've said it's WAC, right? It's, it's the discount rate, the weighted average cost of capital, less your ongoing growth, okay? Closing costs going in, half of a basis point. Closing costs going out. 1.5 percent. Okay, you got to pay a commission. Um, you can just set this up. All these things that are highlighted are variables that you can go on ahead and you know affect the rest of the spreadsheet. Okay, um, cap rate going out, 25 basis points above the cap rate going in. Your financing assumptions, your cost of debt, your marginal cost of debt, 190 plus 225 basis points. So today it's 4.15, okay? Uh, debt to equity. So this can work for both <coughs> how much cash you've got to deploy in the project as well as your calculation for weighted average cost of capital. But so far all I'm doing is putting assumptions down. Uh, what's my cost of debt? It flows from right here. What is my cost of equity? I gave you that, but you can you know, calculate it as well. I'm going to not ask you to calculate that anymore. Uh, 
growth comes from what the assumptions that I gave up here. So once we stabilize, once we stabilize, we said rents are going to grow 2.75%. Okay? And then finally, um, I, although I didn't, I, didn't, um, I didn't account for any, so I left it set up so that we can add tax rate. So you've got it set up for another scenario if you want to use tax rates. And then um, I did not assume any loan costs, but I mentioned in the video, typically when you get a loan commitment, there's a fee you need to pay. <coughs> cash, cash money, you can't borrow that, and then um, um, then you're going to have some sort of closing cost, you're going to have to pay for an appraisal, you're going to have to pay attorneys, you know, to do the documentation, etc. Okay, so you can set up the spreadsheet even if you don't use it, so when you use it in the future, you've already got, got, got this accounted for. Um, what happens, how does this model work, okay? So this model works in a couple of different ways. The income and operating assumptions are ultimately going to allow you to build your cash flow. Okay? And that really talks to rental income, operating expenses, all the way up to NOI. Okay, so this is no different than what we've done up to now. There are more, there are more line items, there are more captions, and what I've tried to do is use percentages that are in line with what the market um, um, allows us to have or tells us that. There should be. So um, when I talk um, operating expenses here are 38.5%. We talk about operating expenses of multifamily being somewhere between 35 and 40%. Okay, 45 max. Um, we talk about vacancy being between 5 and 6%. We talk about credit loss being like half a point. We talk about other income being about 5 or 6%. So it's kind of like you almost work your way back up to your potential gross income after you, you know, you've got your losses to vacancy, cons uh, concessions, and credit. Other income allows you. Another income we've talked about is, you know, pet fees, laundry, you know, uh, uh, um, what do you call it, um, uh, television, you know, whatever, okay? So any surcharge that you are, you know, the renting of, uh, of common facilities, et cetera. So, so the, 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 operating, the operating assumptions let you build up to here. Okay, we haven't done anything new. The other assumptions are more involved with the capital structure, okay? And so what these other assumptions do is essentially allow us to calculate a series of inputs that are going to work along with the model. Okay, so um, we've got a WAC, so we can calculate our, our weighted average cost of capital. Essentially, we can calculate our discount rate. So with our discount rate, we can do net present value calculations if we want to do that. But more important than that, that less the stabilized growth rate is going to give me at least a starting point of the theoretical cap rate that I can work with or use. Okay, we've talked about that. Whack, less stabilized growth, should triangulate back to, and I think in one of the videos, we kind of work to something very similar than that. So we got WAC. Now I can calculate my going in, and I can calculate my exit cap rates. Okay, my NOI for first year and 11th year comes straight from the model. And what do they allow me to do? I can calculate purchase price here, and I can calculate what? Reversion my price. My reversion, my sales price here. Okay. Now I used year 11. Um, we may try next week to work some conditional statements so that we can try to sell this at any year along the way, but that might be a little bit too much to do in this class, okay? Um, uh, but you can fix it. You can say year seven or year five, so you can fix it. It's easy to work with one year and not use any conditional. Um, I can come up with my acquisition price, adding the closing costs. I can calculate my sales price, accounting for my cost to dispose, and I can calculate uh, what my leverage scenario looks like, okay? so. I can take a look at um, how much debt I need to assume, and as a result of that, I can calculate how much equity I need to put in in my unlevered model and how much equity I need to put in in my levered model. So now, the top assumptions allow me to work the operating model to get the NOI. These assumptions here allow me to deal with purchase, sales, financing, and then ultimately be able to put those two things together 
to calculate my project returns. Okay? Any, does that make sense conceptually? Um, I calculated payment. So these are <coughs> monthly and annual. Somebody, I think you sent me a, a model that we, you had differences with mine. There's a difference between annual and monthly amortization. And so if you amortize a loan annually, um, <laughs> it's going to give you a different amount than if you amortize the same amount over the same number of years, but your frequency is monthly. Okay? So, um, um, so uh, I use this as a proof, and you're going to work on this right now. So you're going to work on the rest of the class now. But I want to walk you through the rest of the model. Okay? So um, uh, we're not going to use this section of the model that I use for resale today, but we do use it for reversion for the sale at the end. But um, if you're going ahead and build a resale model on any given year, you can then easily calculate your project return assuming a sale in any year. So if you only do reversion in year 11 or year 10, you can only calculate IRR for year 10. But if you do a hypothetical reversion every year, based on the subsequent year's NOI, right? You can ultimately calculate IRR for sales in year one, year two, year three, year four, year five, any year that you want. And again, if you get really good and use conditional statements, you can then even have Excel tell you what's the optimal IRR, at what year do you get the highest IRR, given the assumptions that you're using. But you gotta get good for that, okay? Uh, we'll, one step at a time, okay? So, um, so, but lay out the framework. Just put, calculate what the resale is. The next one is, so if we could build an amortization table, but I showed you, so going back to the building blocks, Alex, right? You add little things and then you start pulling them together, okay? So um, this is an amortization table, but it's not the amortization table that we built last week. This is an amortization table using the functions that Excel allows us to use the cumulative principle and cumulative um, interest, okay? And so basically, instead of doing it, you know, outstanding balance, payment, interest, uh, how much principal, new balance, you can just go on ahead and amortize for the whole year. You can do this by months. If you want to do it all the way across for 360 or 120 months, you can do that, but because we're doing this by year, you can just go on ahead and calculate it by year. Opening balance has come straight from my calculation. So how much debt do I need to assume? My interest payments. Uh, if there's a doubt, if there's a doubt, let's pop open the dialog box because this is, you need to know how to use this, okay? This is an important, okay? Uh, so you need to solve for rate. I don't know if I can make that dialog box any bigger because I think if I blow this up it doesn't make that box any bigger I can't even do that while it's open okay let's just just hear hear me out you solve for rate okay you solve for number of periods <coughs> you solve for present value and you solve for starting and ending period now that's why I put the months here. Now, <laughs> you can physically type in 1 and 12, but you can just go ahead and do 1, 12, and then just go that plus 12 and carry it all the way across. And then just do the formula once, point up, and then carry the formula across. And t did you understand my answer? So you're, you, you're not calculating this based on the previous year's balance. Excel is really building that whole amortization table in the background, okay? And it's just adding the little bits for the periods that we're telling it. You notice, you remember how on the bottom of the amortization table, we added up all the principal that we were able to add up, all that principal and subtract it from the, and proof the ending balance? Well, Excel's just doing that in the background, okay? And with the same input, it'll solve for the cumulative principle. So, opening balance less ending balance, okay, gives, I'm sorry, opening balance less principal paid gives me the ending balance. And if we want a proof of this, 
2,837,000 happen to be, happen to be what I calculated as my monthly payments multiplied by 12. So uh, the formula looks like it's working because every year it's totaling to $2.8 million, okay? So it seems like it's working, right? Though those are proofs that give me comfort, all right? Now, uh, there's a summary here that I, there, there's a couple of summaries here. Uh, and this talk to the unlevered and levered return. I think you're going to assume nobody's ever going to buy real estate in this country on an unlevered basis. Commercial real estate. Definitely not going to do it with money from their pocket. So like maybe if it's like some dictator that left you know, Bolivia or something and has all this extra cash, they may put it into a building, but that's money laundering. That's not sound investment, okay? So, but we do the unlevered analysis to understand what the incremental benefit of the leverage is for our investments, okay? So, what's the difference between the two models? So this is the bottom of the previous spreadsheets that we have been working with. You know, we had been doing this right underneath. Let me just hide a bunch of columns here for a second, or uh, rows for a second. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So, um, if you really stop, this is really what we've been doing up to now. The model ends, and then we calculate our returns, right? And so, the unlevered model, model points up to the purchase price, okay, without any debt. So, we got to pay all $97 million that we're paying for this building, okay? The unlevered model points to the cash down payment that we have to put. We levered the building 50%. So again, this is all sort of plugged in, all right? I mean, if you build this model once, you can keep playing with it and just change the variables. What's the difference in the cash flows? Well, the difference in the cash flows is that if you don't have debt, your cash flow is what's available after CapEx, right? Because you gotta pay CapEx regardless. So if it's a commercial building, you've got to pay for leasing commissions, TI, and recurring CapEx, regardless of whether you have debt or not. If you have debt, you have to pay for those, plus you have to service the debt. Okay? And so, so from that perspective, if you have an unlevered model, your cash stream is your cash available after providing for CapEx. If it's levered, not only do you have a lower down payment, right? But now your cash flow is what's available after servicing debt. 102, 702, 977, et cetera. Okay? Make sense? And then the last thing that I showed you this week was... I'm sorry? Do we have a question? Is... So you can see that, you know, so leverage obviously... Leverage obviously adds return, the project return goes up, right? My net present value is positive, which means I'm more than meeting, I think Miriam, you had a question, my weighted average cost of capital was 7.08%. My levered, and this is a levered MPV, my levered return is 7.27, okay? If I had to make this investment unlevered, if I had to make this investment unlevered and my cost of capital was 7.03% and my project return was 5.94, I would not do this investment and I would have a negative MPV, okay? Uh, but what I calculated here was, and I walked through in the video, is, is of the return, how much of the return is comprised of current income and how much of the return is comprised from capital appreciation, okay? And the way you do that, it's a net present value calculation. What's the net present value of my cash flows and what's the net present value of my reversion? What's the net present value of my cash flows and what's the net present value of my reversion? And you can see that in a leverage scenario, in this particular scenario, you can't always talk about it this way, but in this scenario, a bigger component of your, of your 
um, IRR, your project IRR, is comprised of current income um, in the unlevered scenario. I can definitely tell you that you're always going to find that tendency. Core funds, I mentioned in the video, core funds tend to lower their leverage component okay, to a lower level. They tend to have le leverage of 40 to 50 percent. And so uh, they're not looking for the big pop at the end, okay? They're not looking for the big pop at the end. They're looking for the current income. The more value guys are going to pile on more leverage, okay? And they're going to be um, as concerned with with current income um, as they are with the uh, with the uh, with the sale. Okay. So any questions conceptually on that? Okay. For the next 30 minutes, what I'd like you guys to do is build. And I'm going to give you a purchase price right now. What I'd like you to build is. Because the one thing you haven't built, really, is, is this. Okay? So what I'd like you to do, I'm going to give you a purchase price, okay? And that purchase price I'm going to put right there, okay? And I'm going to leave the answers up. Okay, here, hold on. But purchase prices, listen, just use, here's what I'm going to do. Here's what I'm going to do. the video um, you can watch the video um, okay so I just, I'm just gonna, you, you you can have it you can do the same thing I did you're building it a little bit at a time so here's your Here's your assumptions. Here's your opening debt. Here's your opening debt. And here's your cost of debt. This is a 30 year amortization. Okay? And you should be able to build this for the 10 years. And you're going to submit it at the end of. So I'm going to be looking for that. Okay? And I want you to use here cumulative interest and cumulative principal function. And this is not a group project. This is an individual assignment, and I'm walking around if you have questions. Can you write it on the board, because not everybody can see it on, on, on uh... <laughs> what, do you, what do you need to see, Caddy? I'll give you the number. What do you need to see? Four and a half percent, four point one five percent, and thirty year amortization. Everything. I can't see anything here. So we can build that. Yeah, you can you read it now? Can you read it? So we're building the debt service. You're building the debt service schedule.
This is all you need to build right now. If you start building all the other stuff, you're not going to have time. You, you can go to the video, or you can stay afterwards, and I'll pop it open. But all you need to do right now to do this schedule, the debt schedule, the amortization using the Excel functions is, 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 is this. There's nothing above where interest is. There's nothing above. There's stuff there, but you don't need it for this no. calculation. Right. You only, need you, don't need, you only need to do the debt service schedule. Right. Totally understand that. Okay. But so starting with the 10-year treasury rate and the premium, and that's the risk-free rate, 4.150. This, this, this is not risk-free rate. This is your loan cost. Loan cost. So that's your cost of capital. Your that's not your cost of capital. That's your cost of debt. So that's interest on the loan you just paid. Yes, sir. Okay. Okay. You understand that? Um, okay, we're going to get there. You want to think a little bit. Did I, is there a difference between that and this? 30 years, 4.15, 48, 650, 898. So you've done it, just cut it. Cut. Don't, the guys, don't send me files with like all of your spreadsheets. Yes. Yeah, Create a copy, right click on it, create a copy. Okay? Yeah. If you've done it, then you've done it. Then you're done. But you can't have all the noise going, so if you got no, the headphones. No, if I'm saying if you have headphones, you can do that. Are you coming up on it? Or are you still working on other stuff? I, I would work on, well, what, it's up to you. If you, if you want to finish the other one, finish. But you've got time on that. I'd rather you do this, okay? You got the right numbers. Okay, so you're the, all you need to do is 48658. <coughs> Can you see that? Uh, 48, it's over there, 650898. Oh, I got you. Yeah. Okay, who had a question over here? So don't send me all these things, just cut it into a new file, and that's all I want, okay? Thank you! Sorry, guys. Uh, you can hide all that, but I don't want all the other tabs, because that file is starting to get too long. And with all the data tables, uh, I don't know if you guys saw, if you guys have files with a lot of data tables, set, set them to manual calculation, because otherwise these files become very difficult. Some of you are sending files, and it like takes me forever to open them, because they're like just all these iterations going. You might want to take a look at you might want to take a look at your calculations there. You're good. You're going good. You're going good so far. Uh, do we just pull the beginning balance from that? Yeah, just use that number. And then, and then the when you put it together, together, when you put it together, you can always point that. You oh, cut oh, it, yeah. paste it, put it on another spreadsheet, just, and you can just, just point to the leverage. Help. Yes, ma'am. Okay. <laughs> Sorry about that. It goes to sleep after a while. So we're trying to do 10 years? Just 10 years. 10 years. It goes, and the problem is if I make it smaller, then some people can't see it. So go out 10 years. I'm going to put it here. Okay? Go out to year 10. Are you, are you rolling? Rolling the dice. You cannot roll in the dice. Yes, Isabel? It's okay. Okay, I didn't get over this. Is the rate 4.15? 4.15. 4.15. 4.15. 4.15. 4.15. 4.15. 4.15. 4.15. 4.15. 4.15. 4.15. 4.15. 4.15
4.15 is the rate, okay? How many years are we going out? 10, 10, ten years. You don't have your calculator, your computer. Okay, okay, that's fine. Yes, Mary. I understand that, but just for purposes of what you're going to send me, just hard code that number. But you've already got the spreadsheet. You've already, it's excellent. You've already done the work. You can go home early. No way. She can. She did the work. <laughs> If you grab all of them, highlight all of them, highlight all of them, and then just double click on one of them. Coño, look at that. <laughs> sorry. The Cuban came out in me, I'm sorry. Okay, you're, you're going good, you're going good. Okay, you're kind of getting there. You're doing good. But don't go to 14, go to 10. Why are the numbers all the same? Because I haven't advertised any separate. Yeah. 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 Okay, 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 you got it, you got it, now you got it, the shit mess of the guy from. Basically, we use the equation. Alright, so now you got the years, you said, we'll start with the years first. Get the years across. You're over here, okay. Okay, so what's the what's the rate? Point to somewhere. Okay. How is it how is it is that annual? Is that monthly? How is that? How many periods are there? How how is it how is it? Okay, so that's okay, you gotta and what do you have to do there? Okay. Now you're getting somewhere. Yeah, that's, that's good. But if you put the number underneath, then it's easier to count that way. The number counts for you. That's nice. Yeah, you can cut it and paste it and send it to me. All the way up to year 10, and that's it. Okay, no, yeah, just copy, just copy for that one. Just copy for that one. Yeah, so you know how to do that? Right click on it. Yeah, just copy it as a number. There you go. So you already did it. Cool. You can go home too. No. Yes. Okay, um, so um, what rate are you using?
I'll come right back to this, folks. I'm going to come right back to it. But that doesn't make sense. I mean, just intuitively, in 10 years. That doesn't make any sense, right? <laughs>
many periods? How many periods do we have? 30 years, and how often are we paying? Paying one per year. Does it look why we have 12 times per year? Yeah, so we got yeah, that's Guys, listen, just as a frame of reference, because I, this is a real life reality check, I haven't seen a mortgage that's payable once a year since like 1985. Okay, mortgages get paid every month because, because people need cash flow and, and you, you need validation that people aren't in trouble. And if you wait a whole year, then, then you can't figure out if people are in trouble or not, okay? So do we have to multiply it Well, so, I mean, that's, so what's our yearly rate? If our, if our yearly rate is 4.15, how much is it per month? Oh, that's, all right, figure it out. So once you fix this, then I'm good. Hold on, hold on, hold on, just hit it. Mm -hmm. What? Well, yeah, I mean that looks that looks uh, looks like that 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 pain that looks like it's right, right? That looks like it's right. That reminds me of like the number I had. So that looks right. Okay, I'm yeah, I'm coming. I have that. I was just checking. That looks right. That looks right. That function looks right. Now, what do you subtract to get to the balance at the end of the year so that it goes? Yeah. Okay, Professor. Minus the principal that you act, the principal that you pay. Oh, it's only the principal. No, you should you only you subtract the. Yeah. You only subtract the principal. Yeah. I'm ready for you whenever you're ready. I'm ready. Right. 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 Um, the numbers don't look right. Chase, the second payment? I don't, I don't know. Give me, give, give me a subtotal. Yeah, give me a subtotal. No, no, give me a subtotal of what the payment is. Oh, you don't add up. Add down. That's not the right number. That's not the right number. How are we amortizing this? Monthly or yearly? Yearly. No, it's monthly. Yes, You're just thinking through it. So you want monthly payments? Now, pull up the dialog box and see what it asks you. And you might be able to walk your way through it. Pull up the dialog box for cumulative interest and see what it asks you. That might walk through it. So, if you were to go and cumulative whatever or look at whatever the function is, yeah. Interest. There you go. Right. See what it asks. What's what's the annual interest? Do we have it? Oh, I'm sorry. Go to the interest. Interest. So, so what what is that's the annual. What is it every month? And then that will go down. You got it from there, man. Yes, Kenny. All right, so this should be the monthly payment. Divided it by 12, multiplied it by 12. But I, I, I didn't add, I, 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 yeah, but, but hold on. There, there shouldn't be anything in that line. What, the debt service? Yeah, you, you that's, no, that's just a heading. Yeah, but I'm using it as the payment, so I can just erase but you, this. Okay. I can but just you, erase this and just write the payment. You can do payments. that, but, 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 but you're getting, no, that's not right. You got to use cumulative, cum prank and cum PMT. Cumulative interest and cumulative principal. Otherwise, you're not going to get. So go to cumulative interest payment there. It's in the video, and I showed it up there. Of course I did. I popped it open. That's what Chase was saying was small. So you didn't show that. Open up the dialog box. Cum go equals. There you go. Cumulative principal. I'm oh, sorry. Interest. There you go. Okay, now open up the box. All the different. So you want the rate. Okay, is that an annual rate or is that a monthly rate? So I'm going monthly or am I going annual? Monthly. Because right now you have Month, me scheduled it. Ten years, but I got but I got a hundred but I got hundred and twenty payments. Correct. So you want a monthly schedule? Yes, sir. No, I don't want a monthly schedule. I want a yearly schedule, but it's monthly amortization. 
So you want me to amortize it right. on an yeah. annual basis, yeah. not a monthly basis? Yeah. On a monthly basis. Yeah. Monthly. Yeah. You understand how that's confusing, don't you? Uh, no, I don't. I see it very clear. Honestly, I'm being serious. You understand? I, 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 I telling me that you want it monthly, but you also want it that it to show up yearly. No, I'm not saying that I want to see it monthly. I'm telling you, it's monthly amortization, and I just want the balance at the beginning and the end of the year. That's exactly what I said. You want it calculated monthly. That's it. You want it to show up. Just once a year. Yeah, that's right. I'm coming, Juliana. Okay. So what's our rate? Now is that, but is that a monthly rate or is that an annual rate? You have too many numbers in this. You only need C2. I'm going to ask him. So you just need to Now, is that monthly? Is that monthly? So, it looks it looks right, but I don't know if right to me at all. No, it's not. What I'm saying is I pulled it out. Oh, get rid of all the pennies. If you get rid of the pennies, maybe it's right. Oh, how do you? That might be, you might be close. I don't know, what's the total of that? Well, I'm not, because I went out 30 years in my balance, which is like $4,000. Oh, so I'm, 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 but, but I'm close. I'm close. <laughs> <laughs> my, my ending balance for 30 years is four. Well, actually, wouldn't it be at the end? But my, I guess what my question is... It should be exact. What's the total? What's the total? What's the total of your payments? The way to prove this is what's the total of your payments? No, just add up those two red numbers. That's not the right number. Is it close? It's close, but there's something wrong in the formula. Okay, uh, can, can you just look at this formula and tell me, uh, just, you don't have to tell me the answer, but which, which one I need to look at. You don't have to. I think it's this one. That'd be great. Exactly. Well, I don't have to tell the answer. We don't have to tell me. No, I do. It's cool. No, the future value is what? And it's fully amortized as well. I got something. That's right, that's fine. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, right. But how much interest are you paying? Is that an annual amount or a monthly amount? Uh, are you doing this monthly or annually? I did it annually. No, it's monthly. So then really I have to put in 12 then, huh? It's 12. Check your number. Uh, that's it, that's it, that's it. It's 12. It appears to be right, yes. You would, yes, you should. I think we're good. I think I'm stuck. You look like you're good, you can send it. You look like you're good. So do you want to include this 10 year that I had from before, or can I just delete it? What do you want? You can keep it. Like that, that's yeah, yeah, that's fine. That's fine. You got to keep working. There's something not right there. I'm trying to figure out. I'm not your effort. I'm coming, Ken. I'm coming. I'm coming. It's about fast for that. Okay, so you've obviously, so come up here. Right, open up the dialog box and see what you may be missing. Uh, professor, I think it's a period. No, it isn't. What's beginning period and ending period? You have it right there. Okay. What do you have at the top? Don't, put, don't hard code numbers refer to your cells that you did there. I put, I, I, for the periods, I put 12. So, technically, um, changing, changing this from 1 to 12. It's a 12 months period. How many years is it? It's 30. But I prefer, well, I put 30 for any PDR. Is this right? Is this right? Okay. 30 is what? No, open up the dialogue box. So the, the, the first one is not a success. It looks like, yeah, it looks like you've got the same formula I opened up. So is it right for, for the interest, but not for the interest? So we're going to multiply this times 12. You should make these absolute references because then you can't cut, carry it across. I did, so I can carry the plot. No, don't make it. Don't don't make it absolute then. Oh, okay. No, no, not there. Not the present value. Yeah. 
I'm coming, Sam. Okay, but hit, hit okay, hit okay, hit okay, hit okay, hit okay. That's about right, but that's not a percentage, it's a number. I know, that's weird. Yes, Sam. Um, so, two things. One is, I think obviously you nailed it. This is more like a question. Well, this is pro, that's what you Basically, they nailed it. Fix, fix, fix. That's what I'm asking. I think I got it. What is, I don't know. Oh, the two of you are just going to do this. Well, just to highlight it all. But this is the same thing. Well, every time I'm going to do this, I'm going to do this. No, no, just this is a column. This is a column. And then this is a column. There you go. Okay. And then the second yeah, question is that I'm actually trying to drag it to the dollar style, yes. but every time I drag it, I still get yeah, the one. No, no, because you've got an absolute reference. You can't have an absolute reference there. Yeah, no, you cannot. Then, then when you carry it across, it doesn't look up above it. No. no. you got to do a different formula. Q, 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 Q me PMT. Uh, oh, no, yeah. Hold on, Kenny's been Ken, Kenny's been waiting. Hold on, Kenny's been waiting. Yes, Kenny. Am I right? No. no. Go to payment first. Okay, open up the dialog box. Forget the payment. Go to the dialog box. The dialog box. No, open it. Hit, hit the function. Okay. Go to rate. Where's rate? Is that an annual rate? Yes. Are you advertising this annually or monthly? Okay. I get that. Divided by 12. Divide the rate by 12. <laughs> okay. period. Starting period would be what, what is what is C six? What is C six? Okay. Thirty yeah, times. What is C? Okay, all right, good. Okay, keep going. Present value. So D fourteen. Yes. Starting period. Beginning period. Yep. Ending period. Ending period. Yes, sir. Yeah. Okay. Fix absolute reference to the P4. You should actually, all these should be absolute reference. The rate, NPR, and PV, so you can carry it across. Something's not right there. That's what you did. No. Pop open a box. Huh? I didn't do that. You did that. Right, 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 right here. here. What was the beginning balance? Forty nine, six fifty, eight ninety, eight ninety, eight ninety, eight Yes. Eight thirty one, that's right. I know that we're close. Now go on ahead and fix that one. Eight thirty one. Right there, eight thirty four for principal. Principles and P A L. Now fix it the same way. Who had a who had a thing? Yes, that is Who had a thing? Who had a thing? We're not, we're not referring to the beginning balance, are we? There's present value. That's what I, this a question I answered to Miriam last night. Present value is always the same present value. Present value doesn't change. Have a nice weekend. Have fun. They don't look present value. The present value doesn't change throughout the whole 10 years? Present value never changes. One thing is outstanding balance. The other thing is present value. That's what I was saying that Miriam's question was yesterday. Excel's doing the amortization table in the background. So in all of So in the and the So for all of these, what it should not be referencing when it's saying PV is going to be 90? No, 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 it's not it's not the opening balance. Right. It's present value. Present value is always the present value. 
really quick, how do we open function to view again? Just hit that. Yeah, uh, FX. There you go. Just make it nasty. Yeah, yeah. If you're looking like you get in there, um, what do you have there? I think conceptually it looks, it looks right. Uh, like what you now you don't need. Oh, that's the stuff that you have done. That's fine. That's fine. That's fine. That's fine. Wait, what is your? What is your no, that's fine. Right? The number of periods. Third. <laughs> The race is the rate divided by the barcode and the third year barcode are like part of the three part of the five. No, that's cute. You didn't do cute. Frank, 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 you what does it say? Return the chemo with the French. Oh, okay, that's the one after you. Sorry, sorry, I gave, I gave you the wrong one. I gave, I gave you the <laughs> You've got the same one. Got, yeah, there, go there. There you go. I swear it was there. I did 30 where you just oh, done. 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 So yes, sir. Uh, by Let me come over here and check out this. Is it more right? Is it more right? <laughs> yes, that looks, without all the pennies, it looks more right. Um, no. So the format looks right. Let me come over here and help you. Let me get some of these guys gone. Boom. The minute you, you're done, you can. How come this? Uh, open up the dialog box and see. Open it up. Okay, now. There is a comma somewhere up here. Yeah, no, I will hit, 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 uh, hit it again. Okay, just put a comma there. Sometimes you have to put a comma there. I get that. Yeah, put a comma. No, 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 no. Inside. Inside. Okay. One. All right. Hit one. Hit one, though. Instead of zero. Yeah. Yeah. Oh. Just see what happens. Okay, now hit zero. Oh, hit zero. That looks right. For this year. Those yeah, two no, look right. Now you got to go awesome. You're still struggling. Yeah, I'm trying to get this right. It's all around. Open up the dot. Open up the facts. Do you remember what you got? Take it like that. <laughs> we just went through it now. That's no, but it's the interesting thing. Yeah, it should be yeah. not one night. Wow. This one got it. Yeah. 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 Okay, Okay, no, no, no. B plus B is only two and Okay, but open it up. They're open it up. See, it's your 
Really? <laughs> Why don't you take the payments all the way across for 30 years and see what kind of balance you come up with? Beginning balance. Shouldn't it always be according to the new balance? The beginning balance is, is, is what is the ending balance of previous year. Not the balance. When I go across. So that means so only I, for the first 10 yeah. years, it's it's the it's the it's, it's including the, the treasury rate. You got you're on a rock. Here, stand up for a second. Seriously, stand up, and then just think in your mind. Just walk away and think in your mind. How do you get to ending balance? It's got to be zero because it's a 30 year. So the ending balance has to be zero. What's the problem? Then? Okay, so my question is, going forward over here, how come we need to make a fix on the beginning balance? Because, because, because you're solving your... Let me finish, let me finish. Dude. You're not understanding. You're going to tell me the same thing. It's not what I'm asking. How come I have to make a fix to the beginning balance here when I transferred over here to be grabbing it from over here? Yeah. Not, not over here. Okay, are you ready to listen now? As I said, because it's not opening balance if you're pointing to. You're pointing to present value. <laughs> And the present value never changes. Correct. So yeah, opening that because I'm, I'm it's all, this is, this is doing those two functions.